The great granddaddy of community health centers was a man named John Grant, who worked for the Rockefeller Foundation and proposed what I think is the first community health center ever articulated as such uh, to be part of what was then called the Peking University School of Medicine in China. Uh, it never really took off because academic medical centers in China were no more interested in the community than they tend to be in the United States. Uh, but, it's universal. But uh, uh, John Grant uh, went to the Rockefeller Foundation and ended up funding Sidney and Emily Clark in South Africa in uh, the 1940s uh, to start these things called community health centers. Uh, a network of community health centers grew in South Africa, not a big country of about 60 million people then. Uh, before it was done, South Africa had about 40 community health centers. Uh, and the flagship was a rural community health center called, at a place called Palela, one of the poorest, sickest, most disease riddled uh, places uh, in the whole country, uh, an African population, of course, and they had other cent health centers serving poor Indian populations and, in fact, some serving poor white populations. And I was fortunate enough to end up going there. Uh, somebody at the Rockefeller Foundation had uh, told me about it, and I thought, if I was interested in social medicine, this was where it was real and I ought to go there. It was a brand new idea to come out of medical school where all of the focus properly was on acquiring the knowledge and skills to take care of each individual person, uh, but to do more than send them back to the environmental and social and economic and political situations which were making them sick in the first place. Uh, and. I thought uh, I, I trained there and in an urban housing, Zulu urban housing project health center, part of that network in uh, Durban, and never occurred to me that years, some years later, uh, we would be planning a health center in a 500 square uh, mile rural area of Mississippi and in the public housing project at Columbia Point in Boston. But we had replicated those two places uh, without entirely uh, realizing it. I came back and wrote a thesis for my degree at Western Reserve on the last page of which I said, some medical school ought to come to the, in the United States and uh, start a community health center. But it was just a pipe dream and nothing happened until 1964, when the Medical Committee for Human Rights that John Dittmer has written about uh, so clearly uh, brought me to Mississippi, uh, and I took a long look around and realized that I didn't need to go to Africa or Latin America or Southeast Asia. We had those problems here, and it was time that we did something about it. This is in the 1960s. And, but I had also been part of the Civil Rights Movement since I was a teenager and got to Mississippi in the summer of 1964 with an organization that had spontaneously formed to be uh, sort of the medical arm of the Civil Rights Movement, certainly for Freedom Summer. It took me about three months to remember the model that as a medical student years before, in 1957, I had studied in South Africa, of all places, where community health centers were invented, uh, and realize that it might be indeed applicable to the United States. And the third route besides South Africa, the Civil Rights Movement, was this new federal agency, the Office of Economic Opportunity, the War on Poverty. Uh, and even before Senator Kennedy's involvement, uh, we somehow uh, talked them into the idea that uh, they could fund this strange new creature, a community health center, as a research and demonstration project, and that's how it all got launched. More than a thousand health centers taking care of 20 million people, that's 
an accomplishment. And of course, it's not our accomplishment. It's uh, tens of thousands of people uh, who came after us uh, building and working in and creating new health centers and expanding them. In the beginning, at almost all of the first wave of health centers, we're not talking just about Columbia Point and Mount Bayou, Bolivar County, uh, but about uh, the South Bronx and Watts in California and Denver and Mile Square in Chicago, all of that first wave, uh, incorporated in their vision and their early planning the ideas of community organization and community participation. There are three words in community health center and we tend to talk mostly about health and center and not as much as we should about these aspects of community. When we're talking about changing lives, we're talking about changing lives in communities and changing those communities in consequence. When we started out all that long time ago, uh, our goal, a part of it at least, uh, we tried at both Columbia Point and Mississippi, not to say it out loud too often, but we thought what we were about was social change. These days, we're finally hearing a lot about what are called the social determinants of health and the recognition that access to health care is important, critical, life-saving on the individual level, but makes only a modest contribution to the health status of a whole community or a whole population. That's shaped by all the things we know about, housing, food, water, employment, job security. The most important thing in terms of what's long lasting is that uh, the health center deliberately focused, among other things, on opening educational opportunities to people. So there are, who had been cut off from them, and so there are physicians and nurses and sociologists and clinical psychologists and dentists and social workers uh, who wouldn't be in those roles today uh, or whose children wouldn't be in those roles today because this effect is what uh, the cardiologists call anti-grade, it's forward flowing. Uh, you change the life of uh, a community health center, local staff person, uh, and train him or her even as an LPN or a technician and you greatly increase the chance that their, his or her children are gonna go to college. I think everybody who comes to medical school, everybody who wants to, uh, it is in some measure because they wanna make the world a better place. Yeah, they want to do research or they want to do clinical care or they're interested in biology and there are some uh, who along with that want to get rich. Uh, but I think there is a piece in almost everyone of uh, wanting to change the world in a good way. What I hope is that as what I'm sure will be a significant expansion that we're on the cusp of now takes place that we can restore more of that social change mission, more ways, as John has said, to address those social determinants of health in the community. The difference now, and this was true at Columbia Point as well, the difference now being that we don't have to do it all alone. We don't have to do it as if we were the only agency for everything in town. Uh, we can try to do it intersectorally uh, with all of the other kinds of resources, housing, food, government agencies, educational institutions, the schools, whatever. Uh, and every bit of margin in monetary terms over what we need to do to do the right job of providing individual health care, I would hope, can go into that kind of effort in the future. The health of whole populations is not primarily determined by medical care. Uh, medical care is critically important if you're sick, but if you, and it will save your life, but if you look at the health of a whole population, that's not the major determinant. The major determinant are what we now call the social determinants of health. What have we been talking about? Food, housing, employment opportunity, equity, opportunity and pathways uh, to something better, the social determinants. 
One of the tasks we have now is how to restore or expand that dimension of intervention to the work of community health centers.